Sticking with oil, the price is under pressure. Our Hadley Gamble joins us now with more live from Bahrain, where the U.S. Navy's Fifth Fleet is based. Hadley. Well, hey there, Melissa. You're absolutely right. The Fifth Fleet is keeping uh, the tanker traffic in the Persian Gulf and the Strait of Hormuz very much in focus. We had the chance to spend 48 hours with the Fifth Fleet on aircraft carriers, on minesweepers, on patrol craft as well. Take a listen. With crude oil prices in a slump that even a geopolitical crisis in the Persian Gulf failed to shake, the U.S. is struggling to form a global coalition to protect international maritime trade, including the 21 million barrels of oil in transit each day. So in this particular case, where 20 percent of the world's oil comes through the Strait of Hormuz, that's not just a United States issue. That's a global issue. Operating today out of the North Arabian Sea at the southern tip of the Strait of Hormuz, the USS Abraham Lincoln is one of two U.S. aircraft carriers in the region tasked with deterring Tehran. This is uh, 4.5 acres of sovereign U.S. territory that I can park anywhere in the world. We're kind of the 911 force. If something were to happen, uh, we could move the ship up there very quickly. Uh, the, the beauty of a Navy aircraft carrier is our speed and agility. Uh, it's one of the fastest ships the Navy has, uh, so we're able to reposition very quickly. But with six attacks on tankers since President Trump's decision to double down on security in the Gulf back in May, many question whether even such a sizable force is really enough. The uh, aircraft carrier is a great symbol of American presence. We show up, we're ready, we're ready to act. And what that does is it we try to add stability to the region. What we have seen is we've seen there's an understanding from Iran. Our, our goal is not to go to war with Iran. In June, President Trump tweeted as much, saying China gets 91 percent of its oil from the strait, Japan 62 percent, and many other countries likewise. So why are we protecting the shipping lanes for other countries for zero compensation? And while the U.S. already partners with 33 nations to protect commercial shipping lanes, Gulf oil exporters may find getting their crude to market in future could come at a cost. It's more critical uh, for them that freedom of navigation is maintained through the Strait of Hormuz probably than it is for us. So I think that they see us as a reassuring presence here in their region. So still, of course, a major focus of the Trump administration is finding a way to cobble together this 20-member coalition, Operation Sentinel. They've had a, a real lack of response, at least so far here. Many European nations saying privately and even openly that they don't want to antagonize Tehran. But at the same point, a lot of questions about whether or not the United States should continue to uh, ensure the freedom of navigation, not just for commercial vessels, but of course for these tankers as well, going to Asian markets and who should be footing the bill. So a lot of questions uh, surrounding this. And it's been uh, pretty interesting to note that in our neck of the woods here in the Persian Gulf, uh, surrounded as we are by countries like Saudi Arabia and the UAE and Kuwait as well, not much of a response, at least so far, in terms of whether they'd be willing to commit militarily to this or pony up in terms of cash.